this week's video homework. Today we're going to be talking about environmental changes and how those lead to adaptations. And the skill that I would like you guys to develop is being able to evaluate evidence to determine cause and effect relationships. The claim that I'm making here in this video is that changing conditions, changes in the environment such as flooding or deforestation or drought, um, or even other things that are not necessarily related to humans like asteroids and volcano eruptions, those changes cause organisms to adapt and change. When the environment changes, it can cause three different things to occur. It causes populations to increase or decrease. It can cause new species to evolve from older species, or it can cause the extinction of some of the species that are there. So if there are changing conditions, it can cause any one of these three things. That's my claim. So we're going to be looking at the evidence that supports that. But first, I'd like to talk to you guys about correlation versus causation. These are two ways that two variables might be related to each other, but they have some key differences. Correlation means that the changes between two variables change together, whereas causation means a change in one variable causes the change in the other. So let's look at some examples of faulty correlational studies or sort of wrong correlational studies. There's this fun website that I found where uh, this individual, Tyler Weigen, collected a lot of data and he used a computer algorithm to connect various data that was completely unrelated. And he would make charts that would show the relationship, the correlation between two random things. For example, in this graph, it shows how much U.S. spends on science, space, and technology, and how that correlates to suicides by hanging, strangulation, and suffocation. Now, just looking at it, it would appear that each of these data points go together, that as we spend more on science and space and technology, we have more and more people committing suicide. And so it seems like there's a connection, there's, that there's a cause and effect. But these graphs are all just correlated. It just happens that the, this data fits together. So let's look at some other random graphs. Like the number of people who drowned by falling into a pool. Is that at all related to the number of films Nicolas Cage appeared in in each of these years? Just looking at the data, it looks like they're connected. They might be correlated but they don't necessarily mean one causes the other. I mean, these are completely random. So this graph here connects the age of the Miss America beauty pageant winner and the amount of murders by steam, hot vapors, or hot objects. Completely random, two, two completely random things, but they appear to be connected. So that's correlation. It's when two different variables might fit together, but they don't necessarily cause one another. And so you have to be careful. If you find a correlation between variables, that might be a clue that they're connected to each other, but it doesn't mean for certain that they are. What we look for in science is causation. So to find if two variables aren't just correlated, but they have a cause and effect relationship, we need more evidence, and we need better explanations of that evidence. Our explanations have to have good reasoning. The evidence has to be sufficient and relevant, and typically that evidence and the experiments need to be peer-reviewed in order to be able to draw a connection between a cause and effect rather than just the fact that the two are correlated. So if we go back to my initial claim where changing conditions cause either populations to change in size, the emergence of new species, or the extinction of species, we can try to make a connection between these two variables. Do changing conditions cause this or are they just correlated? And when scientists make that claim, 
they're going to support their causation relationship through this idea of natural selection. Now, I've already done a video on natural selection, so I'm only going to go over this briefly. Natural selection comes about when these four things occur. The first one is that organisms, populations, have the ability to increase in number. We learned about that when we were looking at the population growth and how the population of water buffalo uh, increased exponentially when they had enough resources. All organisms have the ability to reproduce faster than they will die. However, that then leads to number two, in which competition for limited resources eventually occurs. Once you've increased the number, eventually you'll have a population that is big enough where the resources will not support your large population and therefore there will be competition. We learned about that when we were talking about carrying capacity. Now step number three is that in the population of individuals, there is inheritable genetic variation. There is variation in the genes of the individuals of those populations. So that those differences come from mutations and they are able to be passed on, they're heritable, those genetic variations are passed on to the offspring. So when you combine steps one, two, and three of natural selection, you get step four. Step four is the proliferation of the most fit traits and in individuals. Proliferation means the expansion, the increase. So as a population competes for limited resources, the individuals with the best variation, the most fit traits, they pass on those good traits to their offspring. And so the next generation has more and more individuals with those good traits. There are a lot more individuals who have the adaptation to compete for limited resources. So let's look at some evidence for this occurring. We're talking about when, what happens when the environment changes. This graph shows from current times back millions and millions of years over the last 500 million years. And it's measuring the number of different species on the planet. And so you can see that the number of species increases for a while, and then there are these steep drop-offs. The number of species keeps increasing and increasing and increasing, and steep drop-offs. And the number keeps increasing and drops, and increases and drops, and increases and increases and increases, and then drops. Each of those drops is a mass extinction event. It's at one point in time where the number of species decreased dramatically. This graph shows the same period of time, which also connects that after each of those drops, there is a period of time where new organisms increase. The ones that were lost in each extinction event are lost completely, and the ones that replace the old ones are new species. So after each mass extinction event, new species arise. So my claim at the beginning was that this change in species, the increase of new, in, new species, um, or the occasional extinction of old species, that that is caused by changes in environmental conditions. So let's look at this graph. This graph is really busy, but it just turns the previous graph on its side. So instead of going oldest on the left and getting younger to the right, now it goes oldest on the bottom and gets younger as we go up. So what we have here are these old species that then went extinct and then the species came back. And that drop in number of species is correlated to changes in the atmosphere. A lot of methane was released. It's changes to the ocean, a lot of the oxygen in the ocean um, disappeared. It is correlated to changes in the carbon cycle, as well as this emergence of this giant series of volcanoes that erupted at the exact same time. 
So the extinction event is correlated with changes in the environment and a change in the amount of volcanoes erupting at this one period of time between the Permian and Triassic eras. And all of those mass extinctions are correlated with various natural disasters, whether it's those volcanoes erupting between the Permian and Triassic, or whether it was some other volcanoes erupting between the Triassic and the Jurassic, or asteroid impacting the Earth between the Cretaceous and Paleogene. Each of those mass extinctions is correlated to a natural disaster. But in order to make our claim that the mass extinctions were caused by these natural disasters, we have to evaluate the evidence. And our evidence is explained through natural selection, which is the causation between changes in the environment and these extinction events. So to tie it together, we have these species that are showing population growth as they grow and adapt to their environment, more and more species emerge. And so you have this increase in the number of species over long periods of time. Each of those species will be splitting off and dividing, and eventually you have a lot more species over some amount of time. But then the environmental stress increases. There's more competition for resources, which causes the extinction of some of the individuals. So some of the individuals die off, they are no longer able to pass on their genetic variation, the s amount of species decreases, and as the new species that emerge, these new species adapt and proliferate, they are better fit to the new environment. And that continues to occur until another natural disaster causes more competition and the extinction of many of the species. So what I'm saying is that the normal environment causes organisms to adapt and change, and they, as they do that, new species emerge, but when there's an increased stress from these natural disasters, that causes extinction events due to a lack of resources and increased competition. So I was able to take the evidence of a correlation in natural disasters and the number of species on our planet and use an explanation of natural selection to identify the cause and effect relationship between changes in the environment and changes in the population, changes in the number of species or extinction of other species. So I hope that all made sense. And if you have any questions, make sure you write them down in your notebook, and we'll have an opportunity to answer them when I see you next time in class.